Hello and welcome. My brother used to break in our house and steal the TV. But now he's dead. Uh, what's, uh, what's the best kind of firework to buy? Wouldn't you like to know, weather boy? Huh? 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 And are we ready to fight for it? And when we fight, we win! What did she say? What did she say? And now, welcome the next vice president of the United States, Tim Wall! <laughs> 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 For the peace and the generosity, the kindness and the love that's been shown on our streets of, uh, of Minneapolis, St. Paul and across Minnesota over the last several days. And last evening was another example of that. We, uh, we saw peaceful protests across the city. We saw memorials continue to grow. It's not true. For George Floyd, down on 38th in Chicago, we saw beautiful interactions on the state capitol where out of respect, the National Guard troops there told the protesters out of respect, they would go back away to the building and just take care of those vehicles that were out front, which of course they did. Are you serious? <laughs> Meanwhile... Who do you believe will be her running mate? And are you prepared to go head to head against that person? Whatever she chooses, the problem is going to be Kamala Harris's record and Kamala Harris's policies. The American people are suffering because Kamala Harris keeps on making bad decisions. I don't really care who she chooses as a running mate. It's not going to be good for the country. <laughs> yeah, boy. Political career, that you yourself are part of the elite. What are your first impressions of them trying to frame you this way? To the American public. Well, look, I came from a family where nobody in my family had ever gone to law school. I was, I grew up in a poor family. The fact that Tim Waltz wants to turn it into a bad thing, that I actually worked myself through college, through law school, and made something myself, to me, that's the American dream. And if Tim Waltz wants to insult it, I think that's frankly pretty bizarre. Now, look, what I, what, what really bothers me about Tim Waltz, it's not even the positions that he's taken, though certainly he has been a far left radical. You know what really bothers me about Tim Waltz as a Marine who served his country in uniform? When the United States Marine Corps, when the United States of America asked me to go to Iraq to serve my country, I did it. I did what they asked me to do it, and I did it honorably, and I'm very proud of that service. When Tim Waltz was asked by his country to go to Iraq, you know what he did? He dropped out of the army and allowed his unit to go without him, a fact that he's been criticized for aggressively by a lot of the people that he served with. I think it's shameful to prepare your unit to go to Iraq, to make a promise that you're going to follow through, and then to drop out right before you actually have to go. I also think it's dishonest. Something, again, if you guys ever get an opportunity to ask Tim Waltz or Kamala Harris some questions, he made this interesting comment that the Kamala Harris campaign put out there, and I bet they're regret regretting they put it out there now, because he said that we, and he was making a point about gun control, he said we shouldn't allow weapons that I used in war to be on America's streets. Well, I wonder, Tim Waltz, when were you ever in war? 
when was this, what was this weapon that you carried into war given that you abandoned your unit right before they went to Iraq and he has not spent a day in a combat zone? What bothers me about Tim Waltz is the stolen valor garbage. Do not pretend to be something that you're not. And if he wants to criticize me. For against Tim Waltz. He, he abandoned us. You know, I mean, what the hell kind of leader does that? I mean, he just, as soon as the shots were fired in Iraq, he turned and ran the other way and hung his hat up and quit. We'll get to Barron's new message for voters in a moment. But this all starts years earlier when Barron says Wall's misleading statements about his military service first led him to come forward in the fall of 2018. So you try to get this message out. The Minnesota's largest newspaper checks it out, says it's 100 percent true, but yet refuses to print. When I hung the phone up, I said, what the hell is this, North Korea? Back in 2005, a warning order went out to the 1st Battalion 125th Field Artillery to mobilize for a mission to Iraq. At the time, Walls served as the unit's highest non-commissioned officer. But months later, Walls would retire from the Guard, avoid the deployment, and run for Congress. Tom Behrens was next in line for the position and was asked to take his place. I was like, well, for Pete's sake, if this guy quit, and if I say I'm not going to do it, I mean, what the hell kind of leadership is that? If a company would say, that we're going to deploy to Iraq or somewhere and you're going to be gone for whatever amount of time. And then the foreman just says, no, I'm not going. I mean, what does that say to the 500 people that work in that factory? Barron's would go on to serve in Iraq on a nearly two year deployment as a command sergeant major. Allwell Walls began using that title as a congressman. Barron says he first contacted Walls with his concerns, sending these letters to Washington. They all went unanswered. But then we fast forward to the election in 2018 in Minnesota, and you try at that time to get people's attention with this story and also with what seems to be a very misleading statement that he continued to make about his service. It kind of just sat there, you know, when he was a congressman, he, you know, he bragged that he was, he was a command sergeant, retired command sergeant major. I'm the highest ranking person ever in the, in the house and, you know, all this lie that he was telling. The state of Minnesota came out after 2018, after this was exposed, and they said, well, he can say that he served as a command sergeant major, but he can't say he's a retired one because he's not. And that's what he was saying. And he was saying that, and there was lots of public, you know, lots of cards coming in the mail, you know, for him to be elected. They said right on there, he's a retired command sergeant. Back at it like a crack addict, automatic like a fomatic, built from tragedy, made from static. It's your boy Purple Time, the podcast with the blast real fast. And we back with another episode. As you've been listening to, Kamala Harris has made her VP pick. His name is Walls, and he got dirty draws. And what we doing right now is revealing all the dirt. <laughs> So what we talking about is stolen valor. So Walls was the governor of Minnesota during the George Floyd protest. Now, I already played a clip where he claims that it was a peaceful protest, but we know better than that. <laughs> so this guy has a history of saying things that actually did not happen to actually the way that they happened. <laughs> He said it was a peaceful protest, and he said that he served in Iraq. We're going to get right back to the story. I'm not going to hold you up. This brother actually had to go to Iraq and assume command of the... Between lockdowns, riots, unchecked crime, and a charred police precinct, parents felt he had no choice but again to come forward. Allowing that to be burned down was just like having the Alamo get burned down. It's like We need receipts. We can't just make claims like this, right? We need receipts. So they, the, his command major sergeant just said that he never went to Iraq and he quit. J.D. Vance said that he'd never been in a combat zone. Let's see and hear from the horse's wild. What does Walt say? I know who's in elected office. You need to stop what's happening with this. I'll take my kick in the butt for the NRA. I spent 25 years in the Army and I hunt. And I gave the money back. And I'll tell you what I have been doing. I've been voting for common sense legislation that protects the Second Amendment. But we can do background checks. We can do CDC research. We can make sure we don't have reciprocal carry among states. And we can make sure that those weapons of war that I carried in war is the only place where those weapons are at. <laughs> he said, but a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute, let's read, let's hear that again because he said it kind of fast. 
that I carried in war is the only place where we can make sure that those weapons of war that I carried in war is the only place where those weapons are at. That's what he said. We can make sure that those weapons of war are only in war and the only place uh, they are. They, let's hear that one more time. What did she say? So right now we're talking and discussing Kamala Harris VP pick uh, Mr. Walls from Minnesota. Uh, big draws walls. Big dirty draws walls. <laughs> huh? Big dirty draws walls. And uh, now we want to hear from we heard from JD Vance on walls. We heard from Wall. We heard from the command major sergeant that, uh, of the platoon, the battalion that walls quit and didn't go to Iraq, even though he claims that he hold guns and he never been in a combat zone. But let's hear from the pre the Democratic nominee on because you know let's just hear from the Democratic nominee on what she got to say about the subject of walls and his wokeness. Big draws, woke wall, big draws, dirty woke walls. Big draws, dirty woke walls. That's what the name is, y'all. I think it's going to stick. <laughs> big draws, dirty woke walls. And now let's hear from the presidential candidate from the DNC. And, they, and the convention has... You know, we have to stay woke. Like, everybody needs to be woke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you can talk about if you're the wokest or woker, but just stay more woke than less woke. Cabinet that's locked in the basement of the house. It's on your laptop, and it's then therefore up here in this cloud that exists above us, right? Mm -hmm. It's no longer in a physical place. This really quickly obesity is a serious disease and it needs to be taken seriously, <laughs> okay? What we must never do is apportion blame or make fun of people who are obese. Research shows stress and depression can make obesity worse. Okay, that's obvious. Besides, we've all been overweight at some point in our lives. I'm not gonna say it, but well, <laughs> even if it was just as a chubby baby, is that, is that supposed to be a joke, that, that line? But seriously, promoting healthy eating is no joke. You could have fucking fooled me. That's why we have to stay woke. Like everybody needs to be woke. <laughs> <laughs> and you can talk about if you're the wokest or woker, but just stay more woke than less woke. What this moment in time has done to, to maybe um, cause a lot of us to be woke. <laughs> and I love it. I love it. But folks are woke and I love it. I love it. And I didn't know he could preach like that. <laughs> yeah, girl, I'm out here in these streets. And let me tell you, as they say, they're not like us. Do I see people testifying? <laughs> The mean part of greens. In fact, people used to ask me to make greens for them for Christmas. One year, I had so many that I had to wash that we ended up washing them in the bathtub. So I am not playing around. Back before the war broke out, I was a saucier in San Antonio. I bet I could call up some of them greens. Yeah, there was some crawfish out the patty, yo. <laughs> I made us some crab apple for dessert now, yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Lastly, I told you if you stay to the end, I'm going to have a bombshell for you. This the bombshell right here. So we didn't present an info where he said that it was a peaceful protest. And I also told you that the fact that the mayor claimed that the problem with the George Floyd pro protest in Minnesota and Walsh being in charge is that he waited three days to deploy the National Guard. And then it was a riff about who fought it was because they said they tried to, the walls tried to blame it on the mayor, but then paperwork and these text messages I'm about to show you came out later that the mayor actually requested the National Guard on the first day. And the governor is the one who waited for all three of those precincts to be burned down. And all of that destruction that I showed you earlier has to be attributed to Walls. You let me know your opinion in the comments. Let's go to the video, get you some more receipts. Minneapolis Mayor Jacob Fry has faced heavy criticism for how he handled the unrest following the death of George Floyd. And as John Crowen reports, the mayor now appears to be shifting some of that blame to Governor Tim Walls. The question has never been, did the National Guard make a difference? It's always been, why couldn't they have been here sooner, before the third precinct burned Thursday, May 28th? 
I think the average person maybe assumes that there's soldiers waiting in helicopters to drop in like they do in the movies. Governor Walls responding to a trove of emails and text messages released in response to a public records request from City Hall, backing up that Mayor Jacob Fry right did indeed ask for the National Guard working. Wednesday, May 27th. Texts from mayor's staff. The mayor just came out and said the chief wants to call in the National Guard to help the 3rd Precinct. Staff a few hours later, what's happening as far as the guard? He said Walls was hesitating. Putting a young troop with limited experience in the military with a loaded automatic weapon in the middle of a system with nobody giving them direction. They don't have zip ties. They don't have legal authority. A press release was drafted that night to announce the request, but was never sent. A formal request went out by letter Thursday morning, the 28th. The guard did arrive that day, but was assigned to other missions while waiting for more direction from Minneapolis. We never got such mission assignment. We never got such mission description. On Friday, the 29th, the guard commander explained why his soldiers and airmen needed more specific orders. But the governor also called the Minneapolis response to the riots a failure. That is an abject failure that cannot happen. Mayor Fry is a friend of mine. I trust him. These are difficult situations. I think uh, some of the critiques leveled at the mayor have come from areas where people don't know the complexity of this. We're sure to hear a lot more about all of this. John Croman, CARE 11 News. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Is that some insight? I told you I was saving a bombshell for you. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. I know most people only watch for the first five minutes. For those of you who left this video on while you're doing your dishes and cooking your dinner, I thank you very much. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. I want you to go ahead, click this other video right here. We got all the whole playlist. The playlist is cracking. Y'all don't miss the playlist. The whole playlist is cracking. Y'all make sure y'all get to the whole playlist. Watch all of the videos. The important thing I need you to do is after this video is over, leave a comment and share the button. Hit the share button. You already subscribed. If you're watching and you're listening to this, I know you already subscribed. So thank you. I love you. Salute. 5.0, 5.0, 5.0. What I need you to do now is leave a comment and hit the share button. Share it on your Twitter. Share it on your Facebook. Share it on your Reddit. Share it on your threads. Let's get the discussion going. We both now have, on the RNC side, we have a presidential nominee and a potential VP nominee. On the DNC side, we now have, even though you never voted, Super delegates picked there. You have a candidate on the Democrat, and the convention hasn't happened yet. But there is a candidate on the Democratic side, and now the wokest of the woke, as it comes to woke vice president, Mister Big Dirty Draws, no pause, walls in your draws. And now I'm gonna say good night. Stay tuned. Look at the video. Watch the playlist. Personal podcast with the blast. I'm out.